All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome, and thank you for attending our webinar today. My name is Ashley Limbers, and I'm the marketing lead here at Encompass Solutions. At Encompass, we partner with manufacturers like yours to help simplify business and maximize ROI with solutions that connect their operations, streamlining every part of the business. Today, we are discussing how Epicor Financial Planning and Analysis addresses common financial challenges and the benefits of implementing this solution. Just a few things before we get started. Today's webinar is being recorded and a copy of the recording will be emailed to you. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type those into the question box in your Zoom control panel. We'll bring them up during the Q&A session at the end. We encourage you also to take the survey after today's event. Now, allow me to introduce our speakers for today. First up, we have Paul Bellado a seasoned professional with over a decade of experience in technology sales. As the Director of Sales and Marketing at Encompass Solutions, Paul brings a wealth of knowledge and expertise to the table. Following Paul, we're delighted to welcome Hawken, Epicor's Global Financial Planning and Analysis Sales Lead. Hawken brings a wealth of expertise, joining Epicor from the DF Panel Acquisition, where he was acting CCO and owner, Prior to this, his journey in the industry includes impactful roles at Epicor, totaling over 18 years of experience with his software and over three decades immersed in the field, Hawken has a deep understanding of ERP. Please help me give our speakers a warm welcome. Thank you both for your time today. Now let's get started. Paul, over to you. All right. Thanks, Ashley. Welcome, Hawken. Ashley, I believe we're going to dive into poll questions. So we want to do that first. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Are you able to see the questions on the screen? Yes. Perfect. All right. So we have three poll questions for you today. So our first question is, what challenges do you experience when it comes to your financial management? complex financial processes, limited visibility and insight, inaccurate or outdated reporting, insufficient budgeting and forecasting, compliance and regular, regulatory challenges, lack of collaboration and communication, scalability issues, or my fan financial management is perfect. Um, and our next question is, how satisfied are you with the reporting and analytic capabilities provided by your ERP system for financial data within manufacturing. Are you very satisfied, somewhat satisfied, neutral, or somewhat dissatisfied? And finally, how well does your current ERP financial system scale to accommodate the growth and challenges within your manufacturing options, operations? Excuse me. Very well, moderately well, not very well, or not at all. So please go ahead and take our survey, and it is anonymous, and we will go over the results in about 20 seconds. All right, let's go ahead and go over these answers. All right, Paul, if you want to help me uh, go over the results of the survey or if you're able to see it. Yeah, go for it. All right, so the first question for what challenges do you experience when it comes to your financial management? So this is a lot of different, um, a lot of different challenges across the board. So it looks like there's, uh, see the, Highest percentage is inefficient budgeting and forecasting, along with complex financial processes, limited visibility and insights, lack of collaboration and communication, and also scalability issues. And it looks like no one thinks that their financial management is perfect. Um, let's see, next question was, how satisfied are you with your reporting and analytics capabilities within your ERP system? And it looks like we're 50-50 here, uh, you're either somewhat dissatisfied or you're pretty neutral neutral with that situation. All right, and then our last question, how well does your current ERP financial system scale to accommodate the growth and changes within your manufacturing op uh, operations? And again, we're split here with 50-50 as moderately well and not very well. So you are in the right place today uh, to learn how to better streamline your financial operations. 
I'm going to go ahead and um, Paul, you can continue. All right. Thanks, Ashley. Uh, well, welcome everyone again. Uh, just a quick summary of our agenda. We're doing, we'll do a very quick overview of Encompass and Epicor. We want to give you the rationale for how did we create this solution in the first place and why did we bring it to Epicor? Uh, and then we're going to dive right into the solution itself. Hawken will take over from there and we'll dive right into the actual uh, software as well and give you some insights into um, how it works. And with the limited time that we have, it's going to be a high level overview, but it should give you a good taste of the capabilities. And we'll touch on that throughout the demo and then we'll have time for some Q&A. So let's get started. So uh, for those of you that don't know, Encompass Solutions located in Greensboro, North Carolina. Uh, we've got uh, 40 staff. We are an Epicor Gold Partner. It simply means that we work very closely with Epicor in selling and servicing software to manufacturers across North America. Uh, we've been doing that since 2001, and we've got this strong relationship with Epicor such that Epicor is actually one of our largest accounts where we provide them with implementation services for their accounts that um, they in turn service. Uh, so we work very closely with them. All of our consultants are certified and uh, we are consistently updating our own skill base and knowledge base as new product development occurs. So we're excited to present this to you as well. And well, let's get started. Yes, marketing always wants me to mention this. This is something we're very proud of, both at Encompass and Epicor. Uh, we have been recognized now um, in the Gartner Magic Quadrant, the top white right quadrant, competing with the best of the best. So all that hard work over the last decade has paid off. Uh, and listening to customers and making changes has also paid off for us as well. So it's nice to see that. So we just wanted to share that exciting news we're still, we're still celebrating. So let's just talk a little bit about the product roadmap. How did we arrive at this? So I thought it'd be interesting to give you the rationale for how we go about understanding our client's needs and then how it shapes developments in product offerings and improvements to our software and solutions that benefit you. So really, it, it all starts with listening, collaborating. And, and so we've got our analysts, we've got uh, our own competition, we've got our customer base, we've got uh, our systems engineers and user groups. And we then partner with uh, the customers on the other side of the table, if you will, and get their perspective. What are the challenges that you're seeing in specific areas? What are employees saying? What are the executive team saying? What are your customers saying? And how can we help to grow and develop your business through the use of technology that we offer? So in that process, this is just a little bit defined, but what I wanted to just give you a sense as to the formality of this intentional process for us to gather this feedback. And um, so we start, of course, with uh, the uh, user groups and online forums. We do some surveys. We do customer visits. We do these uh, value exchange workshops with customers to really understand how their business is changing and how we need to align with these changes that are rapidly occurring. Um, we also conduct surveys um, with, in this case, just to share, one was with the uh, uh, CFOs out there. We wanted to understand how their role is changing. And there's sort of interesting insights that we might touch on, but I'll save that for another day. So the message with this is there is a formal process for us to listen collaborate with all aspects of the market and our customers to get some kind of insight as to where there's gaps in our current offering and where there's advantages for us to uh, take hold of a little bit more market share by beating our competition in other areas. <clears throat> so that leads to priority enhancements. And as you can imagine, we've got a plethora of uh, uh, possible improvements. We vet them. Uh, and then we spend a lot of time sourcing those solutions. Um, we evaluate them against our existing solution. And then that leads to us acquiring new solutions. Many times it's through acquisition of outside organizations. And then we go through a process of um, integrating them into the Epicor family and 
working out all the bugs and presenting a solution that's that's worthy of use of your business in usually about an 18 month period that we're ready to go through this process you see on the screen and have it ready for market. So why that's relevant is because we went through that process with uh, our financial offering. And uh, many of you are familiar uh, with the Epicor Financial Core product. Um, and so your GL, your AP, and your AR are all handled. Um, you've got your decent reporting and the capabilities are quite uh, robust for organizations that might not have certain complex needs. But as the complexity rises, then also rises these challenges or needs or wishes, if you will, that perhaps the core Epicor financial uh, solution cannot uh, address. Uh, and so looking at that, we we came back with some feedback from some of the customers that we've spent time engaging and we had these consistent messages and from finance and operations are both saying, can you really help us with this? We want to be smarter at forecasting, budgeting, analysis, planning. We, we just need to do a better job at that. And as I mentioned earlier, this CFO's role is changing, that uncertain economic times and what's happening uh, globally. There's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of challenges. And so there's this uh, need and desire to have greater insight. So rather than just reporting on what's already happened, uh, how can we get smarter in terms of forecasting? How can we manage our own acquisitions and our own growth and we're opening up new sites? We're implementing multiple systems, multiple companies. We've got global business, so there's multiple currencies. And all of that creates this additional complexity. So an example is number three. Can you help us with more efficient uh, advanced reporting? So, you know, a standard uh, approach would be to uh, pull out data from Epicor, pull it into uh, Excel, and then some Excel wizard in your office has to spend sometimes weekends and evenings trying to generate these reports just to get something that can give you insight into how you can manage your business more effectively, what the future is uh, in store, and how you can uh, start to develop more smart budgeting and forecasting for your organization to meet those demands. And then the last one here is, you know, can we do this in an easier fashion? Can we automate things? Can we build workflows? Because it really shouldn't be evenings and weekends where people, our people are spending time putting this together. So um, when the need for complexity around financial planning and analysis is required, it's got to be an easier way to do it in the system. Or even if we decide to do it outside within Excel, but again, an easier way to do that. So that's what we heard at a very high level, not to deep dive too deeply into it. And so, you know, this theme came from one particular customer of ours that said, look, we want you to empower us with accurate and timely data in an easy to manage and easy to understand format that lead to actionable, actionable insights. So data to insights and then insights to action. Please, can you help us with that? And so that's what we heard and we went to work and we scoured uh, what was available. We took a look at uh, one solution that we were already doing business with and we kind of expanded from there and I'll let uh, Hawk and touch more on that. So what we wanna dive into now the, uh, the portion where the really smart guy is going to talk and the sales guy is gonna stop. Um, so Hawk and I'm gonna pass this over to you and uh, let you walk the audience through more about uh, FP&A. Thank you, Paul. Excellent. Uh, thanks for, for the introduction. And uh, my name is uh, Håkan Eberskjö. Uh, it's Haken for, for short. And I will just take you through a bit about financial uh, planning and analysis. Uh, some of you might have heard about the product previously. It was called F EFP. Uh, and uh, so we have been a partner or DS Panel was a partner to Epico for many, many years. Uh, but then it was called Epicon of Financial Planner. Then it was renamed during the acquisition. And the main reason for that is that you wanted to fit in within the wheel here uh, because it becomes a whole suite of products. Uh, so if you look at the uh, financial suite uh, today, you have it, it's a more complete product where you have the FPNA as part of the solution within financials. 
uh, that was a kind of a weak spot uh, within Epicor earlier. And now we have a complete solution where you have all the general ledger feature, chart of accounts, multiple books, and all those good features. You have the ARA details. You have the governance and risks and everything else. And then you've added now the FBA part, which means that it can stretch the product much further than it were ever able to do before. And this is also uh, the, one of the reasons why it was renamed because yeah, the Epico Financial Planner didn't uh, really speak about the product fully. The other thing, if you talk about the value proposition here, uh, one of the key things that we always talk about, and I think you've heard about that many, many times, the Excel UI is critical uh, because it speaks the language of most users. They understand it. It's a tool that you will never get rid of. It's something that everybody in finance that I talk to, uh, they, they like to use it. And if we support that in a good way, it's easier uh, to get acceptance of using a financial reporting tool. The other thing is the web interface here. This is a smarter way of deploying it because the, one of the problems you get with Excel, you get it become really, really complex after a while. The browser interface means that you can access it anywhere uh, and you have a much better control actually over the processes because it, it doesn't allow customizations in the same, at the same extent that you do in Excel. So it adds a mo much more robust interface. And then you have the full picture of everything, the storybook, the way we work with the system, so you can work and collaborate with all the your peers uh, in your company and also externally. In the way we do this, and we have the, the way of receiving the data, we create the data mark. So how we store the data, it is a data warehouse, which means you can actually receive data from multiple sources, not only from Kinetic or other ERPs. We can blend that actually and handle it inside our system. And then you transform the data works in the way you need to present it out to the users. And then you present it in reports, budgeting and planning, forecasting, and so forth. So that there you also have an input possibility. So you can do enter budgets and enter forecast or upload things straight into the data mart itself. Transformation is the things we're going to talk about a bit. The other features, where if you talk about capabilities in the in the system, you have of course all the reporting capabilities in here. Uh, you have a actually a large stack of standard reports out of the box. We normally pick from that when we deploy it to you. Uh, so even if we have 30, 30 plus reports in the library, we only ship maybe six or seven of those into your system um, because we pick from that together with you when when it's deployed. And so it fits your needs closer so you don't have to start deleting old reports of things that you will not use. You can work with anything from uh, financial and non-financial data. And you can always schedule reports out to users. Then you also have the budgeting and planning features, including ML. So machine learning is built into the core of the system. So you always have that as an, an engine and a usability feature uh, when you budget and forecast. Consolidation is also part of the core. So on any version of FPNA, you can actually run consolidation if, if you have multiple companies. Uh, so you can always consolidate. And then it depends on how complex that will become. And if it's two companies, single currency, of course, it can be very simple. But as Paul talked about, it can be really complex. If it's a multi-company, it's maybe even multiple gaps and so on. It becomes really complex. The thing with the FPNA here, uh, it, it's not only uh, reporting. I mean, it's a fully fully fledged FPNA solution. Uh, but at the same time, you can you you can do on reporting. You don't have to do everything here. You can make or handle very complex issues, but you don't have to make it complex. Now, even if we are supporting large enterprises and can scale extremely far, it doesn't mean that that's the way we have to deploy it. You can make very simple deployment as well. So you have all the, the breadth of the system, so you, which means you can grow in the system here. You can start small, deploy it, go live very quickly, and then grow into the system, become a very large in, implementation. But you can do that all the time. And most of the time, that's exactly how it's done uh, for most customers today. If we look at the, all the products that we have, or the different plans that you can actually work with here, 
And with financial reports, that way you start with own reporting, which is which is reporting platform, both browser and Excel all the time. Again, it's a single company, but then you can add additional companies if you want to. If you do, then you can consolidate. Uh, cash flow calculations and business source engines and everything is still available here as well. Then you can go to basic, then you add budgeting and planning and forecasting capabilities. And then the standard, the, then you have 10 companies included, which is the key differentiator here. And that you can also add additional modules like advanced consolidation or sales budgeting. Maybe that's what you want to do. And then with enterprise license, you have all the add-ons included, plus you have unlimited number of companies supported. And so you normally go in with a plan here. And that's where you start and then you grow into it. If you want to extend it, you can always extend whenever you like. We have also thought about how we address users and how we deploy this. So if you start reporting and analysis, that's normally a simple deployment, normally targeting accountants and so on. And it's more like an onboarding process. So it's very, very fast uh, and you will see when I show you the system that it's not it's not complicated to learn. I mean, I you can normally learn anyone to build a really complex report in an hour, then they will know how to do this. The navigation is something you only, only need to show someone for 10 minutes, then they will actually see how you click around in the system. The budgeting and forecasting, slightly more work because that, that involves the workflow sometimes. It involves also maybe how to upload data, so it's slightly more complex. Again, but mostly around onboarding processes. Then if you go into prepackaged financial logic and, and these features with add-on modules, that's where we normally need to work as a consultant and assist you more with the deployment and you work through the process. If you go all the way up to enterprise level, that's where normally we work as an advisor as you would work with any like KPMG or whomever that you work with. We are an advisor uh, as a financial consultant and assist with the deployments, uh, which we do when, on most larger deployments. If you start with the, the part one here uh, and uh, roll it out, this is where it's really, really designed for traditional uh, you know, makers, movers and sellers. It's very, very integrated and deployed very quickly. You have the best practices instantly sent up. So that means you go live. Basically, the day one, when you get access, you will have a live system. And the thing that you start with after that is more how to adjust the business model, maybe how your department structure looks like and how your uh, divisions looks like and so forth, which is more adjustments, but they, everything is already running. Then you can start with budgeting and planning. You have the ML AI engine built in. You have the rules, business rules engine or for automation, like the cash flow calculations is there. Everything runs in Excel, web, and mobile. Then if you extend it, then you have all the financial extended parts, like the consolidation. If you have multiple companies, maybe you have multiple currencies attached. Maybe you do group consolidations. You have a, a larger group that you consolidate in multiple steps multiple scenarios, you have budget forecast, multiple, maybe actuals, reporting actuals and so forth. You can even support multiple gaps here. So maybe you run US gap, IFRS in parallel, and maybe a statutory reporting and so on. So you can run all that in parallel. It's still no coding. There's no coding or scripting anywhere in the system. So it's completely designed to be used by financial people. That has been the design philosophy behind the tool all the time that we should make it as uh, easy to use by finance people. So the technology involvement is normally uh, four or five hours and that's it. And then after that, the finance and the operational team that works with the system will take over completely. So, so what we're trying to do here is that it should be like an out of the box solution here. And we trying to deploy everything out of the box, but it's still custom fit for the company. So it works the way you need it to work. And it's designed of course for makers, movers and sellers, which is the primary target for, for Epicor. And that's how we have tried to deploy everything we do in the system here. 
so it becomes really, really simple. And we see that on every customer that we roll out today with all the installations we have done so far. It's accepted and we are just adjusting this, of course, constantly because as Paul said, the best feed for information and the improvements in the system is always coming from customers. So what, why would you select FPNA? I mean, the things I've talked about, web browser and you have the Excel interface. So you have both here. It's not only Excel. I would most of the time today, uh, I when I speak to to users and customers, they tend to they want to go to uh, to Excel because that's a, that's what they've been using all the time. But uh, when they go live with our system, most of them stay in the browser only. They never go to Excel, and it has been a huge shift in terms of usability here. It's not that we are taking away anything. It's more that we we see how people operate. It has been a huge shift just to stay in the browser. There, there are, of course, a lot of benefits to use Excel, especially if you create workbooks and so on. You want to share that whole workbook and then Excel is excellent. But then you have the drill to transactions all the way down to invoice trackers. Very easy to navigate. You have the dimension structure. Dimensions for me is like the, the, the departments, the divisions, uh, maybe the customers, the parts, accounts, and everything else. That's the dimension for me. But how you organize that and structure it in different ways, that's what you can do with simple drag and drop. And that gives a very easy way of customizing the reports because you can customize and build reports and you can do that on the fly. You can change the structure of a department just by drag and drop and the report is reflecting that change instantly. So it becomes very, very easy to use here. And then you have the budgeting and planning features, the forecasting features. You can re-forecast as many times as you want, rolling 12 or yet rolling forward all the time. It's something you can do very easily here and refresh the actuals into your budgets. You have the consolidation features completely built in. You have the machine learning engine built into the core as well, which will actually analyze your source state automatically. So you have the quick time to that. You go live, but it, with the system very quickly. Then you can activate even more features as you go along, but then you're already live. And it's designed for finance users. That's the key message uh, from us all the time here. It doesn't take that long to implement. Uh, I mean, we talked about this slightly. Financial statement and reports. It depends, of course, how many, how complex reports are, uh, but you get the basic reports out of the box and then it's normally between 20 to 30 hours 30 hours to implement. Then if you add basic, the key thing, the difference here is budgeting and planning to implement that and to get the workflow set up. Standard ads, a bit more and so on. You scale it up with enterprise. The key differentiator, I, I guess, is if you go to sales, maybe if you go to advanced consolidation, then it adds to the hours, depending on how complex processes you want to do here. Advanced financials, if you want to do HR, pieces in here that can also be fairly complex depending on how, how that looks like. So the key differentiators, recap here, key target audience, accountants are really a key target for us, has always been, and these are the people that really likes our system because it speaks their language. Uh, it's very easy to, you have to get into very quickly. And that you have the both the browser and Excel online reporting in here. You have to drill to features. You can drill into the invoices. You can drill into inside the product postings. You have the shot of account configuration features with drag and drop. So you can have multiple shot of account supported in an easy way. And that you have the best practices of the budgeting and planning features, which means you go live and can use it very, very quickly. You have the direct connection, which means that the integration is already done. And, and even if we subscribe on data from your system, you can refresh it whenever you like. You know, it takes maybe three, four minutes and you will have fresh data, you just refresh it. Uh, and then you have, of course, if you want to extend things, go into advanced consolidation. If maybe you have a, a complex ownership structure with partial ownerships and, and so forth, then you need advanced consolidation. So, so that's that we can scale it that far, that you have the machine learning engine in here that simplifies 
the way you do budgets and forecasts. I don't know how much you have created, you know, seasonality curves and so on on your data. I'm trying to spread out, allocate out numbers over month and so on. This is exactly where the machine learning and engine can can help because it will analyze your source data for every data point in your system and give you a, a very good curve over that over that number and can allocate it out for you. So yes, add the total. And then of course you have a personal relationship with the people that you work with. I mean, when you work with Encompass, you work with Epicor, we will always work very, very close with the implement close with you and the implementation when we deploy it. That's uh, open up for some questions. Actually, where are you Ashley? Yes. So just a reminder, if you have a question, please type those into the question box. Um, it looks like we do have our first question. Um, perhaps they're not compat. Um, I'm sorry. Perhaps they're not comparable. But how would you compare uh, FPNA to spreadsheet server? Yeah, and the spreadsheet server is Excel based, uh, which means that it stays only in Excel. So of course, it has some similarities when it comes to just Excel here. Uh, the difference I, I would say is that we do both browser and Excel at the same time. Uh, we are pure browser uh, or cloud deployment. Uh, so we have both that. And we have then all the budgeting and planning forecasting features as well, plus consideration. So the business rules engine is actually much, much easier. So there are, of course, similarities when it comes to only, if you only stay with reporting and only want to do Excel, then there are uh, yeah, a lot of similarities for sure. It's just that we extend way beyond that as well and that you have a full FP&A suite. Uh, in, in the FPNA product. Great question. Um, our next question is, how does Epicor FPNA accommodate various business sizes? Business uh, sizes. Yeah, it, it, so it depends on what you want to do. I mean, it, we can work with very, you know, small companies or uh, if it's say just for reporting purposes, then it's a very simple deployment and start doing reporting. If you have very large organization, which we work with a lot as well, then it depends on the scale of the organization. If it's a lot of departments, a lot of divisions, maybe a lot of multi companies, all that is fully supported. That's why we had the different plans as well to support that in a smart way. Um, so it, it, I think it scales really well, actually. And we have no problem with extremely large volumes of data. We have customers with millions of transactions per, per day, and that's still uh, it only takes seconds to open reports. Uh, so you never have volume problems uh, when you use the system. Great. Thank you. Uh, that is all the questions that we have at this time. Okay. Perfect. So I think I need to share my screen. Let me see if I figure this out. Uh, there, no. Share screen. Let's go. I hope you see my screen. Please confirm. Um, yeah. let me see. I might have to stop sharing. Hold on one second. Do you see my screen? Yes. yes. Now it's gone. Excellent. Okay. So what you see on screen here, this is basically a home page for a user. It can be, I mean, it depends on who you are. So I'm just logged in as the CEO in the company here. So this is my home page. Uh, so you have the my page, and then you can have different dashboards attached. So here I will see my reports. I have some other details of budgeting things that I should do here as a CEO. So if I click on my dashboard, maybe I will see my my details about my company. Uh, and you see that this is a multi-company implementation. So these are the revenue for all my companies in the group. I have gross margin, operating profits, and, and the cash flow across the whole group in here. I can maybe zoom into some details, and I can just select that and, and drill into details. So I can just analyze things that is relevant for me as a user very quickly. So the navigation here is quite simple. Again, you just navigate through the sites. If you want to do reporting, uh, if I can actually impersonate myself as another user as well. So if I then, I will switch to become Oliver. Oliver is a regular report user. And the thing you will notice here is that 
this user has a lot fewer details on the screen and has different measures, the KPIs that is attached to him. And then he has his, his reports here. And that these are the reports that it's deployed to, to Oliver. He has go in, I can just click on it or right click and I open the report. And I will show you in a second as well, just to, to show you how to build a report. And I'll just start from here. So here's my regular report. Uh, and so it's my actuals, actual previous year, year to date and so forth. Uh, and I have some KPIs attached as well. So you can work with any type of numbers. Here I have my head counts here and I also show my gross profit per employee in, in this. On any number here, I can just right click on it and I can start drilling into details. If I want to break this down by division, I can break it down by division, but across all the companies. So this is a fully consolidated view of all my data currency converted. And then you can switch between this if I want to break it down by departments, just you know, slice it and, and select that. Everything can be downloaded to Excel if I want to. I can even break this down now by customer. Even if customer is not part of my chart of account, I can still see my whole PL data broken down by customer directly in here. So the navigation is, uh, is quite simple. You can do ad hoc analysis on it directly as well, just by selecting the numbers you want to analyze. Then you select them on the screen and you set the measures that you want to have to compare with directly by clicking the gear up here. Then you can set the measures you want to use as comparatives in here. So it's, again, it's more, you click around, you have the same features that in Excel that you see the sum of things that you have on the screen. And you can also drill into details. You see that I was navigating around on, on the dimensions that I mentioned, but these are these are the companies that I consolidate right now. I can drill into the journal of this company. So this is my journal. And you see that most of it is sales journal related and has some G, uh, regular journal postings as well. If I scroll to the right, I can see more details about it. There is some, some invoices and so forth in here. If I click on a single journal, then I see the details of, so this is, this is the complete journal. It's this invoice. But I also get these icons up here, which means that I can click on that and I can see that it's this invoice and so forth in here. If I click on another one here, I can see the, all the details behind it all the time. But I can also click on source, which means that I basically logging back into Kinetic. And then I open up that invoice inside Kinetic. So you have full drill through uh, and the navigation is, is quite simple in here. You can do the same thing on the uh, on the cost side if you want to drill into periodic postings and so forth. You will be able to drill into that as well. You had the regular filters up here as well that you publish to users. So you decide what filters the users should have and how they look like. So this is what, what I mean with categorization. That's something you set up. That's the changes that you do uh, for uh, the business model that you deploy. If I switch back, uh, for a second, you have to, to build a report. I just want to show you how to create, how easy it is to create the report from scratch. Let's just go back to the CEO here for a second. He's my administrator as well. So if I create a new, new report, I just click new here. I will call, I will call it PNL, year to date, variant. So, okay, then I point to my, my accounts. So I always read my income statement reports or account details. So here is the hierarchy or the you know, account tree that I've created. Normally we retrieve that directly from, from your ERP system, but you can adjust it directly in here as well. And you can have multiple, if you have multiple shared of account or gaps, they will be available to, to link to here directly. So I picked that. I will do a month report, so month to date, year to date, and so forth. I will compare with my budget data. You can have unlimited number of scenarios here. I'll have prior year. I want to show variance. 
and year to date. So this will give me a ske report skeleton, but it's but it works directly. Now let's go back in time here for a bit so we get some good data. Let's look at October 2021. So we have some data. So you see that now I have a report. So I have my month to date, I have my year to date, I have my previous year, and everything uh, everything works. So the drill downs, consolidation, and all this is already active here. I can do analysis on it if I want, just select the numbers I want to analyze, then I select them on the screen the same way you looked at earlier. You can share, subscribe on reports directly. So subscription means that you can set up subscription on any report uh, from anywhere. Basically, you can get the data sent out to as many people that you want set it out weekly from today and just set it up here. It, it's, a, again, quite simple process. This report can now be customized. That's kind of what you do is that you build a report and then you customize it. So if I want to build a similar report that we just looked at, I can set up the filters up here to start with. Let's remove all oh, scenario. It doesn't make any sense. So we'll have that. And maybe I want to have some, I want to have my companies available as a filter and maybe departments. Then you activate the filters that the user should have up here. Then you have the columns, the same way here. The columns can be customized. So you get the base columns created, but all of them, you can move them around, drag and drop and put them however you want and add new things in with custom formulas or just add all the time members that you want. The rows, are added automatically. You see that because it's a single selection, I get all my accounts here. And this can be changed. If I want, want, don't want to show the details, I can just change that here. And then I have a summarized report instead. But if I want to have, maybe I, I can remove this. And I want to have the same structure, but I want to have a report we looked at earlier. Um, then I can go to new import from report and I can copy from another report. So I can just pick that one as a base. Then I have that structure instead. And I, it's created. And on, on everything here, I can go in and customize now with formulas and everything else. So if the gross margin calculation here now is not correct, I can go in and fix that and make sure that because this it doesn't correct the formulas. The way you do things in here is that you click on things. So if I want to have my total revenues, it now it's selected total revenue, and I I will divide by my gross profit, and I select it. So it's very, very simple to do formulas and it's my gross margin calculation done. And then you can customize this as you want uh, with all the styles and, uh, and sharing and everything else. And now it's kind of built. You have the budgeting and planning features as well in here, just to show that uh, quite quickly. Um, if I just open this budget sheet here, you can do this in many ways, but if I start with this, this is uh, sales and cost by this division zero two by this department. The roll up on numbers happens at the same time as you leave the cell. So if I set this to the total two to something else, you see that it allocates out the value by month automatically. I can type the total here. It will instantly aggregate and roll up for all the departments. I can copy copy paste, you can paste it in from Excel. You can add commentary things as well, depending on what you want to do. Or you can also use machine learning here. So here you have the spread keys that you attach to the budget sheet. So depending on what you want a user to have available to them, if it should, if it should be spread by previous year maybe, or some other spread keys, you attach that to the, to the to the input sheet, or you can use, also use prediction. That's when we use machine learning. Then I get a spread curve from the system. And in this case, it used weak regression method. So that's because that's the closed model fit I have. Then I can use that prediction and apply it. 
The thing you get here, which is interesting, is that you get a spread curve by month. Then you can adjust the total and say, okay, this total I want to go with is maybe, I want to go with 1.7 million for the year or something like this. But then it, it will use the spread key from the ML engine by month. And you can apply this also over many. So it, it's quite simple. And you can send that off then in the workflow for approval. You have to send off the whole sheet. Or you can select, send off a section of numbers, depending on how you want to work with things. And that's the same way when you do approvals is that you can decide what numbers should be committed, approved, uh, rejected, and so forth. You don't have to do that the whole uh, on uh, one piece at a time. So that's a bit about budgeting, budgeting and planning features. We can do that also with HR. We can do sales budgeting and, and so forth as well. And you have all the consolidation features in here uh, also. So that's how far I want to take you with uh, uh, demoing the system for now. Uh, I think I should hand it back to, to you, Ashley. Perfect, thank you. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yes. How can I do? Okay, thank you, Paul. All right. Yes. So now we're going to go into another Q and A session. Uh, if you have any questions about anything that uh, Hawken demoed or anything from the uh, in the previous presentation, please be sure to type those into the Q and A box. Um. And we'll see if we have any questions. I'm also happy to, to show some more details. If you have any questions, I'm happy to dive into that as well. And yeah, while, while we're here. Perfect. Well, I'm not seeing any questions come in at this time. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide see here. All right, perfect. It looks like we've covered all of the questions. Um, if you're still typing, that's okay. Please continue to submit those. Um, Paul, was there anything that you wanted to cover or say before we go today? Uh, no, just uh, thank you everyone for your interest. And um, you know, we, we realize that you're probably going to have additional questions that you might be more comfortable in asking uh, maybe uh, as a separate organization in a private setting, so we can certainly make uh, arrange for that to occur. Um, you know, we're excited about this because of the challenges, just some of the challenges that you mentioned at, at, at the start in the poll with the budgeting and the forecasting challenges and the visibility. And um, it, we're excited to have a product or solution that really addresses all of those and, and a an exceptional team of experts behind the scenes to help uh, with smooth implementation. So um, keep in mind that there are different phases of uh, starting point. So you don't, you, you can, uh, you know, start off uh, very lightly, if you will, and then grow into it. That's how we designed it. So we we're hoping that uh, you take advantage of that. But thank you, Hawkins, for your time. And thank you, Ashley, for organizing. Thank you, everyone, for uh, your interest. Yeah, thank you. Thank um, you. Hawken, was there anything that you wanted to include before we go today? Um, and I, I, thank you, Paul, for adding us here. Um, great to be here. Uh, I think it's just get back to us if you have any questions. And please encourage you to reach out uh, to the Encompass team. Um, if you have any details, we, we will be happy to dive into any details here, of course. So yeah. thank you for having us here. Yeah, thank you both so much for, for your time. Uh, the next step, if you would like to learn more about FPNA, uh, please feel free to schedule a discovery call with us. There is a QR code on the screen. You can also email us at support at encompassinc.com or visit our website. Uh, for attending today, we are giving you a free resource. It's 10 reasons why you should choose Epicor FPNA. Um, so you can download that by also scanning the QR code with your phone. And we will uh, be sending that out in the follow-up email with the recorded webinar. Um, and if you would like a copy of the slide deck, just respond to that email and we will happily send that to you. Thank you for being here today. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you at our next event. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.